I have to say again this week, I'm a little troubled over this past week of, of what I need to say this morning. Um, we have several different lessons and several different things happening in the in our news this past week and things that are happening here within our own community, but they all kind of actually coesce together quite nicely when it comes right down to it. This morning we have a story in the Gospel of Mark that gives us two stories. It's a story of the healing of a young of a young daughter, of a very rich and powerful person, and the healing of an unnamed woman, right? And it's an intersection. Jesus just came back from across the water, right? A couple weeks ago we said, or was it just last week, Jesus got in the boat and went across the lake, right? He made the disciples get in the boat and go across the lake to get to the other side of the lake because Jesus tells us to, right? We're not going to go there. We went there last week, so... Um, But the disciples were across the lake. And we don't get the story of what happened when they were across the lake. But when they got across the lake, Jesus healed who? He healed a demoniac. Someone possessed by several demons because their name was Legion. And he cast them out of the man and into the pig. And the pigs ran over the, the cliff and killed all of them. So now we have Jesus coming back across the sea. And when he comes back across the sea, this rich man meets him and says, Come, please, quickly, and heal my daughter, for she's dying. And while he's going he's in this mass crowd of people, and it always makes me laugh when I read this, Jesus knows that somebody touched him, and he turns around and he goes, all right, you touched me. Can you just imagine the disciples, they're all like pressed together around him, and they're like barely moving like this, you know. If you've been in a crowd like that, where you can't hardly even move your arms, right? And they're like, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody in this crowd has touched you at some point in time. What are you talking about? You're crazy. But he knew that something had happened, and this woman had a hemorrhage for 12 years. She's been bleeding constantly for 12 years. And nobody can help her. And here's the thing that we have to understand about this story. There are three things, three things, that can make one unclean so that you are cast out from society. And unclean doesn't mean dirty, like a two-year-old or a four-year-old or any boy out in the yard rolling around in the mud. Or some girls, too. That's not what unclean means. Unclean means that that you are not in a state where you are in a good relationship with God. And there are three things that can make you unclean that would remove you from the community. One of them is leprosy, which, unbeknownst to us, or today, leprosy was any kind of skin disease. So if you have a rash of any sort, anywhere on your body, that's leprosy. You would be cast out of the community. Any flow of fluid from the body. So a 12-year hemorrhage would count as a way to be removed from the community. Or coming in contact with a dead body. These are the three things that would make you unclean and cause you to be removed from the community. And that's exactly what this woman is, right? What's this woman's name? What? It doesn't say. Right? Jairus comes. He's a a ruler in the synagogue and he comes to Jesus and says, My daughter is dying. Jairus, the synagogue leader, a rich, powerful man in the community. And then as Jesus is going, a woman with a hemorrhage for 12 years. That's all we know. That's what her name is. She's a woman who's been removed from the community. And because she's probably had this hemorrhage, it means that she probably doesn't have any children. So she has no one to take care of her at all. She has no money because she spent it all on doctors to, get, to, to try to get to be made well. And she has one last ditch effort to try to touch Jesus. But do you know what the problem with this is? Because when she touches Jesus, what does that make Jesus? Unclean. It makes Jesus unclean. But Jesus knows that she touched him when, she, when he's walking. And she, he turns around and he's like, okay guys, what's going on? Somebody touched me because something happened here. And he finds out what had happened because she comes to him in fear and trembling. Because she knows that she's going to be in trouble, right? Because she's touched Jesus and that made Jesus unclean. But Jesus doesn't do what he's supposed to do according to the law. Jesus looks at her in the face 
and says what? What does Jesus say to her? One of the first words. What's the first word? Daughter. Daughter. It's not woman or person I don't know your name. He gave her a name. He called her daughter. And to be a daughter of somebody signifies what? That you are part of the family. You're included. You're no longer outside of the gates. You're no longer outside of the community. You are now accepted and part of the family. Daughter, your faith has made you well. You've been healed. So I wonder, what are those names that we get called? Or not even by other people. There's a few names that, that as I was looking at, at different things this week and studying the scriptures, there's a few names that a couple commentators threw out there. Like, um, if I said the name Fat Amy, would you, who knows who that is? The younger crowd, of course. <laughs> it's a, who is it? It's a character from Pitch Perfect. So, if I said the boy who lived, only two hands? Thank you. Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the boy that lived. He's the boy that should have died, but he's the boy that lived, right? We have names that tell us something about ourselves. And I don't want to know what people in the world call you. Because you know what? None of that really matters. It doesn't matter what someone else calls you, other than God. And we'll get to what he calls you in a moment. But the question that I have for all of us this morning is to be actually honest with ourselves and tell us the names that we call ourselves. Unworthy, fat, loser, stupid, ugly. What do we call ourselves? And how do those names affect us? See, this woman was a woman who had a hemorrhage. She was ostracized from the community because of the names that people had called her, because of the places that she had been put. And all Jesus did was say, here's your name. You're now daughter. And you belong to me. And don't believe anything else that anybody tells you. So see, that's the most important name that comes to us anyhow, is the name that God calls us by. And that name is daughter or son. Child of God. Beloved child. I've heard different stories this week. One of them was shared about a family that thought that they couldn't be a part of a community because they couldn't contribute to that community. Right? That was my struggle this week because council talked Tuesday night about where we're at financially. And every church has financial issues, and that's not an unknown thing. But we, as a council, as the leaders of this congregation, we are supposed to lead this congregation and use the money the best ways that we can and to understand that. And then this week as I'm working on the sermon and thinking about the names that were called, and I hear this story about this little girl, younger than 12, but still, a little girl who says that they used to be a part of a religious community, but now they're not because they were told that they didn't have enough money and they couldn't be a part of that community. What are those names that we call each other? And what are those things that we do that don't portray what God is calling us to be in and of the world? You see, like last week, we talked about how God tells us, Jesus tells us that we're supposed to get in the boat and go across the lake. We're supposed to go out into the people to take his message of love to the people, to take his message of what he calls them to the people so that they don't have to listen to what the world calls them, to the names that don't really matter, but to hear the name that does matter. Son, daughter, child of God.
Who you are mm -hmm. is based in what God has made you. And God has blessed each and every one of us richly in many and various ways. Okay? Look in the eyes of your children. Look in the eyes of your spouse. Look at all of the things that you have and know that you are rich beyond compare because God has blessed you. And blessed you not just because He loves you. He's blessed you because He loves you. But He's also blessed you to then turn around and to be a blessing to others. So go out into the world and help everyone know that the name that truly means anything to them is the one that God calls them by. And if they don't know what that name is, then invite them to come and hear what that name is. Because that's all that should matter. That God calls you daughter. That God calls you son. And that he will always be with you. And that no matter where you've come from, or what you've done, or where you've been, this is the place where you're welcome. Because all of us have something to give. All of us have a part to play in God's mission. And everyone should be welcome. Because we are all God's children.